Yes, BYU football is on a four-game losing streak. Yes, they will have to win the final game of the regular season to go bowling. But the feeling after this game against Oklahoma is a whole lot different than the previous three. We're talking about it on Postcast. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And a quick reminder that this is your original daily podcast focused on all things BYU, mainly focused on BYU football and basketball. We cover it all. And this is a special edition postcast as BYU falls 31 to 24 to the number 14 ranked Oklahoma Sooners. You heard that right. BYU battled their hearts out. They end up falling by seven in this game. And I've got to say, this is a completely different feeling for me personally doing this postcast than it has been, especially in the past two weeks when BYU got absolutely curb stomped by both West Virginia and Iowa State. BYU uh, just sucked it up today and found some pride, found some gumption, found some grit, found some I don't know, some want to uh, is one thing that Kalani Satake has talked about in the past couple of weeks, the want to, the desire for his team to go out there and uh, try and will their way to a victory. Well, had they not turned it over three times and had all three of those turnovers cashed in for touchdowns by the Oklahoma Sooners, the Cougars very well may have done that. So that's why I feel different about this game for BYU. Yes, they're on a four game losing streak. Yes, they are below 500 on the season at five and six. They are two and six in a uh, big 12 play in their debut season season as members of the Big 12 Conference. But BYU stood toe-to-toe with the 14th ranked team in the country, the Oklahoma Sooners. And like I said, had it not been for a couple of really rough turnovers, one in particular, just an uh, ill-advised, you can't have it, 100-yard pick six for Oklahoma, BYU very well may have come out on top in this game. And talk about like reigniting some belief in this team had they been able to pull off this victory. So as we do on postcast, talking about the positives, and we'll get to the bad here in just a moment. But the nice part was it was good to see Jake Retzloff in particular bounce back from an absolutely horrendous performance against Iowa State, quite frankly. He was 10 of 27 passing last week. This game, he improved that to 15 of 26, 173 yards, two touchdowns, and of course the aforementioned one interception. He did also have two fumbles in this game that we'll get to here in a moment. But I really, really thought that he held held himself together and held BYU together in some key spots. The big uh, star, the big breakout performance of this game belongs to Aiden Robbins. This is the Aiden Robbins that we wanted to see coming in from UNLV. He looked like the guy that you watched when you saw the highlight reels of him coming from UNLV, of breaking off big runs, being an absolute locomotive, just, just going downfield, running dudes over. He ends up with 22 carries, 182 yards, averaging 8.3 yards per carry in this game. Absolutely masterful from that young man. There's nothing to complain about. When BYU goes out and rushes for a season high as a team, if I'm not mistaken, 217 yards. That was very impressive. I was one of those last week who looked at BYU rushing for 100, and I think it's 188 yards, if I recall correctly, against Iowa State and said, okay, That's kind of a one-off. We'll see if that's actually legitimate, if they can kind of recreate that against the likes of Oklahoma. Well, they surpassed that. 217 yards rushing, averaged 5.7 yards per carry. Far and away, BYU's most effective day on the ground. The offensive line looked very, very good, all things considered in this game. I was very impressed with Connor Pay, Kingsley Suamatia, Paul Miley, Waylon Lapuaho, and Braden Kine. They were the five that made up the offensive front uh, for BYU in this game. And uh, it was a really, really encouraging performance for BYU to get off the deck. This is a program. Remember, we've talked about this the past two weeks that looked left for dead. They had felt like they had given up on the season. I talked about uh, the feeling both in the pregame show I do for the KSL sports zone, uh, the station that I work for here in Salt Lake city, as well as on the podcast about the fact that I was just, I was afraid that BYU had kind of essentially melded in the season or they just, they're over it. They were like, okay, you know what, whatever, we're over it. It was good to see the Cougars 
bite back. I guess is the easiest way to fight back and uh, get back into this game. Now, Dylan Gabriel uh, suffering a head injury uh, in the first half and not coming up back out for the second half. That did help BYU's cause. But even before he went out of this game, BYU was going toe to toe with this Oklahoma Sooner squad. Uh, Gabriel finished 13 of 21 for 191 yards and two touchdowns before he left uh, in the game. Jackson Arnold came in and was a, a five for nine for just 33 yards. So ended up 224 uh, passing yards for Oklahoma and BYU's rush defense until the final quarter and even the kind of the back half of the fourth quarter, BYU's rush defense had been very, very good in this game. They limited Oklahoma on the day to 34 carries for 144 yards, 4.2 yards per carry. And I'd venture to say 60, 70% of that felt like came in that final quarter when Oklahoma was able to salt the game away. So encouraging performance for BYU. Is it enough? No, because they did not get the victory. BYU ends up with 390 total yards. I thought it was inevitable that BYU was going to get to the 400-yard plateau, somewhere they have not been all season. Now, 11 straight games without going over 400 yards in a single game this season. I thought it was inevitable, but I was encouraged by the fight, the want to, the determination that BYU was going to go down swinging in this game. It was encouraging to see them do that. Now they will have to recreate that and take that on the road, which has been a big problem for BYU this season in terms of road victories outside of the Arkansas game. Uh, you've got to take that same type of effort, even better probably, and take that on the road when you go to Stillwater next week. A couple other standouts I wanted to mention. Cody Epps, good to see him back 100%. Six receptions, 90 yards, leading BYU in both of those categories. Good to see him back out there and doing his thing for BYU. And then on defense, got to give a big shout out to Talon Alfrey. Uh, Talon Alfrey, excuse me, not Talon. Talon Alfrey let, leads BYU with 10 total tackles in this game. And he was, a, there's a reason why Talon Alfrey in training camp before he uh, suffered the broken collarbone that he had. Uh, there was a reason why he was a starting caliber safety for BYU. He's got all the talent to be that, and it's good to have him back out there 100% healthy. He did get, a, get up a little bit gimpy at one point uh, during the game, but good to see him get back out there. Max Tooley in his final game as a Cougar was second on the team with seven total tackles, had half a tackle for loss, as well as a forced fumble. So uh, good to see Max Tooley having a good day. And then also Crew Wakely, seven tackles in his own right, one pass breakup. A.J. Vong Pachon as well uh, with six tackles, uh, one and a half tackles for loss. So a lot of guys playing in their final games at BYU in the senior day would have liked to go out with the victory, but good performance is all the same that they can point to. Now, where did it all go wrong for BYU? Well, there's a few different places, and I, I'm I'm not going to absolve the coaching staff on a couple of these, and we'll talk about that as we continue on right here on Locked On Cougars. Now, a word on our friends real quick, though, on our uh, over at Perry Homes. Of course, Perry Homes is our good friends. We've been working with us for many, many months now, a local sponsor of ours. Whether you're looking for your first home or you're ready to upgrade to your dream home, Perry Homes has a house for you. For 50 years, Perry Homes has been Utah's premier home builder with communities throughout the state. They have many communities, home designs, and price points all designed uh, to meet your needs as a home builder. The best part is they have beautiful communities in Davis, Salt Lake, Tooele, and Utah counties all along the Wasatch Front, no matter where you want to live there, or multiple communities as well in Washington County near St. George if you want to go down to Red Rock Country and live down that way. They offer over 50 unique home designs from Ramblers to two stories to townhomes, and the best part is they are offering generous financing incentives through their preferred lender as well to help you guys out a little bit on that end uh, as you go through the home building process. So visit Perry Homes Utah to see what's new in Utah's finest neighborhoods. That's Perry, P-E-R-R-Y, PerryHomesUtah.com to learn more now. For 50 years, Utah has been coming home to Perry Homes. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars a part of your day. Thank you for making it your first listen and, of course, uh, being everydayers with us here on the podcast. All right, so the bad for BYU in this game. Well, uh, first off, why in the you-know-what uh, was an RPO option even given uh, to Jake Retzloff on what ended up being that 100-yard pick six for Billy Bowman Jr.? Uh, no offense to Jake Retzloff, but the fact that the coaching staff even put an RPO call on the field is just abysmal in that circumstance. Uh, it was good to hear Aiden Robbins speak after the game, and he talked about the fact that he's it is what it is when it came to the decision not to give him the ball to cap off that drive. Let me translate that for you. Give me the bleeping ball and let me punch it in for a touchdown. That's the translation that uh, reading between the lines, in my opinion. Uh, I'm 
Aaron Roderick screwed up hard on that one. There were other coaching malpractice type stuff that happened in this game. When you're in a close game like this, you can't just be calling timeouts willy nilly at any point in the game. There was a, a critical play. It felt like in the third, in the third quarter that be what you called a timeout on when you'd like to have had that in your back pocket, Kalani Satake, uh, when it came uh, down to the final two minutes, when you needed to get a stop. The other thing about this is why in the world to be why you go for it on fourth down so often early on in this game. And then late in this contest and you, all of us could see it. BYU's defense is starting to wilt under the pressure that Oklahoma was putting on them. He decides to punt the football away and give the ball back to Oklahoma. Therefore, and it ended up with Oklahoma salting this game away. Coaching is just as big of a problem for BYU this season as any of the on-field issues have been for BYU. Now, some of you have sent me messages thinking I'm a little bit too much of an Aaron, Aaron Roderick apologist. I, I understand that. I have been a defender of A-Rod in terms of his play calling and whatnot. Today, there were some very, very undefendable calls and none bigger than that pick six. That was a 14-point swing. You had essentially give the ball to Aiden Robbins, let him punch it in, take the lead, and who knows what might have happened in that circumstance. And Apparently the computer gods did not like me on that, so I apologize that it had a little bit of a blip there. But nonetheless, getting back to my original point, how in the world do you decide to take the ball and give the even the option to Jake Retzloff on that play? Kalani Satake said that he took the third option on that play. The first was to hand it off to Aiden Robbins. It was an RPO. Hand off to Aiden Robbins. Run it in yourself was the second option for Jake Retzloff. And what does Jake Retzloff do? He decides to take the third option that shouldn't have ever been given hit to him in that circumstance. And he sees a hot route. He sees Cody Epps. Uh, essentially, the way that the defense was uh, lining up, they were late getting into formation. But Billy Bowman uh, absolutely read it perfectly. Breaks on the ball. He knew it was coming that way. And he picks it off and off to the uh, off to the races. And Jake Retzloff, by the way, nearly chased him down. So I'll give Jake Retzloff credit for uh, just absolutely Absolutely putting his heart and soul into trying to chase him down after that play, but you cannot as a, as a, as a coaching staff, you cannot put an inexperienced quarterback in that circumstance. The late fumble, the strip sack by Danny Stutzman, who is a fantastic linebacker, by the way, for the Oklahoma Sooners. If he's not the big 12 defensive player of the year, I think there's going to be a major, major controversy there. My personal opinion on the matter. Uh, here's the thing. The offensive line did their job on that play. And Jake Retzloff has to understand there's going to be a free rusher on this play. Get the ball ball out of your hands. As he mentioned in the post game, he held on to it. That is inexperienced quarterback play that absolutely crippled BYU because he's unable to hold on to that football. Oklahoma gets it back and they cash that win in. They have three turnovers that Oklahoma had all cashed in for touchdowns. 21 points. You lose a game by seven points. This is a similar circumstance it feels like to the Kansas game earlier this season. If you don't give the turnovers, you don't give those points away to the opposition, how different are you feeling if you're BYU? It, there are there is blame to be had for the players in this uh, game, obviously, for some of the miscues. Obviously, Jake Retzloff with the three turnovers, they're all cashed in for points. But I, I, I cannot defend Aaron Roderick calling that RPO on that play. Your rushing attack got you down the field. Let them cap it off. Kalani Satake said this was not the Marshawn Lynch, the beast mode incident that the Seattle Seahawks had in the Super Bowl. It was supposed to be a run play. You're supposed to run it in for a touchdown. Why in the world was even the option there? For Jake Retzloff. Now, the only way I see this being absolved off of Aaron Roderick and Kalani Satake's shoulders is if Jake Retzloff uh, essentially he went rogue and called his own number on that play and essentially kind of signaled out to Cody Epps that we're doing this instead. I don't think that was a play call, and it's it, it's indefensible. You cannot defend that play calling in that circumstance. So yes, I am going to be critical of Aaron Roderick in that circumstance, but. It just you can't. The coaching has been when BYU's kind of been competent at points this year. The coaching at times has stepped in. We've talked all season long. You guys know who have been listening to this podcast, who are everydayers with us. You know how I've talked about the fact that if it's like it's not like one thing for BYU, it's something else. Well, guess what? The coaching does not get a complete absolution out of this. They have had their own woes when the players seem to be doing the right things. Sometimes the coaches have taken it out of the players' hands themselves. And in this circumstance, I'm laying that hundred yard pick six at the feet of Aaron Roderick. And it, I don't know, it, it, it's, it, it's really, really tough to stomach because how incredible would the feeling be for BYU to have knocked off the number 14 team in front of a very, very raucous crowd. 
Got my problems with The Rock. The student section is as fickle as any fan base out there in in in, uh, in amongst the BYU fans. The fact that they couldn't even fill up, what, two-thirds of the student section during that game uh, against Oklahoma, that's an indictment on BYU students. So come at me, Rock, if you want to, but that was pathetic. The rest of the stadium was chock full. I was there. I saw it. But the student section over there, wide swaths of open seats. Uh, it's unfortunate because that shows how fickle, how fair weather the BYU students are turning their back on their fellow classmates. That's indefensible in its own right. So tough, tough loft, loss to stomach if you're the BYU Cougars. And like I said, I, 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 maybe I do come off as a little bit of an apologist for Aaron Roderick. But in that circumstance, you take that play out of the quarterback's hands and you say, you either – Run this in yourself, or you give it to the running back who got us into this position on the two-yard line and let him cap it off. And I, I, I'm i telling you that it is what it is comment from Aiden Robbins. My translation is, yeah, give me the bleeping ball and get out of the way because he wanted nothing more than to cap off that drive with a touchdown. And to have that go from what looked like a ready-made uh, seven-point uh, touchdown for BYU and essentially a 14-point swing in the blink of an eye, Oh man, that, that, that one will grind my gears. That will stick with me uh, for quite a while. All right. Uh, we will let you guys have your say. I threw it out on social media on Twitter in particular after the game, let you guys have your say. We'll roll through as many comments as we can, as we can in the time remaining before we do that though, let's get a quick word in on our friends over at UCCU. Learn and earn is the UCC mobile banking apps, new feature that is paying your entire family to learn about money. We all be, we all want to be smarter when it comes to our money and with financial literacy uh, being a more invoked topic. That's where Learn and Earn steps in. It's broken down financial topics into fun, bite-sized educational games like quizzes and trivia. Every time a family member completes a topic, they earn points that accrue and can be redeemed for gift cards to stores like Amazon, Apple, Sephora, Walmart, Nike, and many, many more. There's age-appropriate content for every member of the family. You can compete against one another and track your progress on leaderboards. And more importantly, uh, you can. Uh, it's all available inside the UCCU mobile banking app, so you can play it anytime, anywhere. And of course, the more you play, the more you learn, and the more you learn, the more you earn. Simple as that. Learn and earn. Part of UCCU's award-winning Be Money Smart Youth Banking Program, helping kids, teens, and parents have fun while becoming more financially literate together. It's all courtesy of UCCU. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. All right, is your guys time to shine? Let's throw it up. We'll share the screen here and uh, throw it over to the Locked On Cougars Twitter feed where we uh, seem to always go in the post game. Let's see, share screen here. Let's throw this up here and let you guys uh, see what's going on uh, from your fellow uh, BYU fans. I'm going to go make it go full screen here so you guys can see it all if you're watching this on YouTube. We'll re roll through these comments. So I threw out the question. Tough, hard-fought loss for BYU today. What did you take away? Of course, Jacob C. Hatch will have a podcast a postcast or podcast for you guys later on uh bergmaster uh, bergmaster once is much better than last week turnovers killed us all three resulted in points one should have been running the ball into the end zone you're right it, it's indefensible you should have been giving that ball to aiden robbins it, it's it's sad that that was uh how it all went down but nonetheless uh next one paris preston i wanted to come up with something clever to say however like our offense everything i've typed has also come up a yard short Ooh, there you go Pre Preston, I like that. Uh, Jordan Hewitt, Shung Zhao says, uh, hard to overcome three turnovers. Retzlaff showed uh, flashes of a promising future, but it still makes rookie mistakes. Everyone played with a ton of heart. Hashtag go Cougs. Now, I will say this. That was just the third career start for Jake Retzlaff. So, the hope is that he will continue on a kind of an ascendant plane and uh, really build towards potentially being the QB1 next year. Uh, I'll also say this. I don't see how BYU changes out quarterback going up against Oklahoma State. The rushing ability of Jake Retzloff alone has opened up this BYU offense so much. I just don't see any, any possible way you can flip back over to Keaton Slovis. If they do, I think that is yet another mark on the, the coaching malpractice that is uh, marred. Uh, some of the season for BYU. You just can't do it, in my opinion. I, I love uh, Keaton Slovis. He's been a very, very good representative of BYU. But at this point, at this juncture, you cannot, you cannot uh, take J Jake Retzloff off the field. Uh, I think that would be just a, an abysmal decision to do that. All right, JT Lamro, BYU actually has some fight in them. I just wish, wish this would have come sooner because this team easily could be in a bowl game. Two major turnovers by Retzloff, actually three of them, uh, was the difference. Hard to put it on the guy, but hope this game both 
bodes well for him next year if he is the QB of the future. That's a very, very good point, JT Lamro. Uh, it appears that he is going to be the QB of the future. But yeah, you want to see improvement from him. Uh, it, it, it's tough because those are those come with uh, the the growing pains of a young quarterback. Have stuff like this happen to have it come up in this type of a game where we're so close, so hard fought. It's doubly st uh, tough to stomach, so it's really tough to do. All right, Royal Strong and True at Healy Bomb says way better than football, way better football than the last four games combined. Aiden Robbins showed true grit and ability. Jake made a lot of good plays and a few bad ones. If one of those turnovers could have gone the other way, it would have been a different story. Uh, we, speaking of BYU, did have our chances to win it. I agree, BYU had their chances. Uh, none bigger. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm stuck on that pick six. That's a 14 point swing in about five seconds. And it's just crazy uh, that that's the way it went down. Cause you punch that in and BYU, by the way, never actually led in this game. Had they punched that in and taken the lead, how different uh, does BYU play the rest of the way? They're probably playing with all kinds of confidence. The crowd is absolutely electric, which it was electric most of the day, even though BYU never took a lead. It would have just been that much more haywire. So it would have been fun to see that. All right. Alan Kirby says, it would have been more frustrated if they had a chances to win. But after sitting through the game last week, I'm just glad that BYU competed. Yeah, I've got the bar set low, it seems. I don't think you're wrong in saying that, Alan. A lot of fans, yours truly included, as a media member, I didn't have many hopes for BYU in this game. This is Oklahoma. They're ranked 14th in the country. This is a BYU team that barely looked competitive against both West Virginia and Iowa State. How much could BYU really uh, be ready for in this circumstance? Well, they show that they have heart. They have that want to. It was good to see that. Uh, Jeff Henor, it's hard to, I was too hard on Slovis. Retzloff cost us the game more than he won it for us at times. If Slovis isn't ready next week, I'm all for Cade Fennigan getting the start. Jeff, I love you, my friend. I know you, you've been a long time and a loyal listener. You do not go to Cade Fennigan. Sorry, Cade Fennigan ain't it for BYU. I think you stick with Jake Retzloff because I thought he showed signs. And if he can just cut down on those turnovers, uh, it looks like he has got a path to being a pretty competent starter for BYU at minimum. All right, uh, Scott Nelson at S underscore W underscore Nelson. Such a frustrating game. This is the team I expected in the middle of the year. Not going to win every game, but good games. And what is up with the equipment? Somebody should know how to kit out a home game. Now, BYU was wearing new cleats today. I can confirm that. Now, there was still some slippage uh, for BYU. They're going to have to revisit what the actual turf and the grass situation is for BYU at this point. Because if they switch out the cleats, which I understand that they did, and there's still slippage going on, that means to me that the playing surface is either A, too slick, B, too old, speaking of the grass just coming up uh, too easily, or C, a mixture of all of the above. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, Casey Finlinson, that I'm sad that this was the the last home game of the year and it goes by way too fast. Hashtag go Cougs. It does, does go by super fast. The fact that this is the penultimate uh, weekend of college football's regular season. I'm, I'm in, I, I'm in, a, I'm in absolute denial. That, that is the case, but nonetheless, uh, that's where we stand. Uh, Mojo, our good friend, uh, serving our country as an air force pilot, some suspect play calling in the second half, but at the end of the day, you can't have that many turnovers against a team like OU and still expect to win. We beat ourselves can still get to six with OSU next week. Yes, you can still win. The, the one thing about this is I feel like BYU is fighting because they know that they are running out of time to get to that sixth win. Now they obviously will have just the one game to get it right against Oklahoma state, but I think it would have been a different circumstance had BYU already been uh, eliminated from bowl eligibility. Obviously, they're playing for the seniors as well. I think it was a nice uh, mixture of, uh, I don't know, motivation that came from BYU in this game. The hope is that they can bottle that and take it with them on the road next week and find a way, just find some way to win that game against Oklahoma State and punch your ticket uh, to the postseason. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, let's go back. Let's scroll down here a little bit. Uh, Matt M staples five. At least there are some, still some fight in the team and we aren't completely broken. The hard part is anytime we had momentum, we turned it over. Yeah. There was multiple circumstances where it felt like BYU is getting momentum and they would just fumble it right back or throw an interception. They just, they would give it right back to Oklahoma. You got to learn to get out of your own way. Uh, if you want to win football games and BYU could not get out of their own way in this one. All right. Um, other ones, BYU four tray playoff bogey. Jake Retzloff just needs to take care of the ball. 21 points off of three Retzloff turnovers. BYU wins this game if they don't have those turnovers. Retzloff looks a lot better today. Maybe the uh, future isn't quite so bleak at quarterback. That field needs to be upgraded. It is an issue. Yeah, yeah I said you got to take a look at that now because if you change out the cleats and there's still guys slipping, 
obviously you look and make sure that those guys are wearing the new cleats. And if that, if that is the case, yeah, the next thing you look at, you've got to look at the surface and figure out what is going on there. Uh, Zach Lavelle, if we could change a few plays, we would have won the game. Yeah. Three particular plays, those turnovers in many circumstances and the final two turnovers in particular, you can't give short fields to good teams. Good teams will punish you for your mistakes. Oklahoma, good team. Punished BYU. That's exactly what they did. Uh, Tyler Bell, don't make an idiotic decision on, to throw on the two-yard line with a red-hot running back and we win the game. No doubt. You're absolutely right, Tyler Bell. Like I said, it's indefensible on that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tommy, uh, for those who would have rather seen a blowout, don't be a loser like that. I, I, I agree. I really enjoyed this game, frankly, and the, the comment right below it, Nick Lee, part of me just wishes BYU would have gotten blown out early instead of sucking me back in only to keep me up tonight with 1000 painful. What ifs BYU had this game and completely blew it. No moral victories in big boy football. Yes, there are absolutely no moral victories. It's win or loss. It's cut and dry. It's black and white. Uh, but here's the thing. You got to take some, con some, You've got to be taking some confidence out of this game thinking, okay, BYU's got fight. They've got some grit to them. That can help in terms of uh, chasing that bowl eligibility slot next week. Blair Red, everyone on the offensive staff should be on the hot seat. Blair, I, that's a hot take right there. I appreciate that. Uh, the offensive staff is got to answer for some things because, like I said, you cannot you cannot give that uh, option to Jake Retzloff in that circumstance. That's coaching malpractice. You got to give the ball to Aiden Robbins in that one. Uh, Cap and Jack Coog, Jar underscore of Dirt underscore twelve says, "A good hard fought battle. I'm not mad at Jake, but we lost the game because of him. I don't blame him because he's still learning. But the reality is reality, and sometimes." Reality sucks. I Okay, I can see that. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Uh, next one. Life or Jazz. I take away that the team lacks discipline. They put forth effort, which is a huge improvement after the last four stinkers. But until this team gets disciplined leadership, they will always make silly turnovers or stupid mistakes. They should have won by 14. Bad coaching, bad team interesting life for jazz. So you're a little bit down on them. I get that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Giovanni, uh, Gio underscore Bonnie. I think that's what it says. Giovanni says if BYU ends the season six and six and Utah seven and five or eight and four, which by the way, the Utes uh, did get absolutely uh, boat raced by Arizona earlier today. What are the chances to get a Holy war bowl game? I'm going to say not likely, but it's not out of the realm of possibility either. Uh, Giovanni, uh, let's see. Uh, Aggie fan Dan, our good friend, uh, who's a Utah State fan, says, I have three takeaways. Fumble one, pick six, fumble two. Turnover margin, man. I hope my Aggies can beat Boise. The last time we did, we forced seven turnovers in the first half. Uh, here's the thing. Those turnovers, I I've said this often on the podcast. You ever dares know this. BYU's 5-0 and this season when they win, win the turnover margin. When they are even, or in this case, they lose the turnover margin, 0-6. It's crazy how simple it can be at times, but that's what it is. Uh, why for life? I saw fighting Aiden Robbins and some good O-line play on run game. Still too many mistakes, and the defense sucked on third down. Yes, they were 50% uh, uh, conversion percentage uh, for uh, Oklahoma in this game on third down. You can't have that. It's still too much. But we kept it so much closer, and we were in the game the whole time. That's great. It is a positive step. I agree. It is a positive step in the right direction. Now you got to go out and find a way to win games. So we'll see what happens. Uh, Waldorf stories. Metallica. So close, no matter how far, nothing else matters. Okay, all right. Uh, Wild Turkey Fart Blood, our good friend uh, Ryan Van Wagenen. Just not good enough from the st from the staff to the players. They just, period, aren't, period, good, period, enough. It wasn't good enough today. I agree. And you got to be uh, doing, uh, you got to be doing things to get out of your own way. They did not get out of their own way. And that, that I'm laying that at the feet of the coaches today. I am laying it at the feet of the coaches. The players gave the effort that the coaches have been pleading and begging for all season long. And the coaches felled the players today. That goes to Kalani. That goes to Aaron Roderick on down the list. It's just not good enough. Uh, BYU NLV fan, our good friend running rep D Humes. Give the ball to UNLV running back Robbins and BYU wins easily. This is as angry as I've been in years. Go Rebels, beat Air Force. Which, by the way, UNLV did beat Air Force and the UNLV running Rebels are going to play for the Mountain West Championship, it looks like. Crazy, crazy stuff. So, I don't know. A lot of the takeaways feel like they're kind of being repetitive at this point. Uh, Idaho brand slam at Brandon J. Fessler says my takeaway. I didn't know it's possible to feel both hope and frustration at the same time. Winking emoji. You're not wrong. It, uh, you, you feel like frustration. The fact that they lost the way they get the way that they did. But after, like I said, some of the stinkers they've had earlier this season, it was good to see BYU fight and kind of just do their thing out there. So we'll see. Um, let's see. JP Snyder. These type of losses I can live with. 
hard fought mistakes to clean up with an inexperienced QB. I think that's a very well reasoned take there, uh, JP. Uh, let's see. Next one. Interesting because use the word takeaways. That's it. That's why we lost. That comes from B Cook at Cookies, a uh, Cookies Nine, I believe is how you say that, uh, B Cook. Uh, thank you for that. And then uh, last one. Let's see here. Uh, yeah. Last one, Ryan Welling right here. Ryan underscore Welling. BYU played tough the whole game and should have won They could, if they could just get out of their own way. Those turnovers were just utterly crippling. Yeah, they were crippling. And you cannot afford to have those uh, come and uh, beat you in, in terms of the uh, the ultimate margin of this game. So tough loss, but BYU's back at it next week at Oklahoma State. Uh, taking hope that they can still qualify for a bowl game to the final week of the season. We'll break it down all week long, get you ready for that when it is Thanksgiving week as well. So uh, just a little bit of a heads up that we will take Thursday off in terms of the holiday, but planning on doing shows otherwise Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and also Friday in the lead up to that regular season finale against Oklahoma State. Uh, BYU basketball in action a little later on tonight. I'll probably do a YouTube short, a quick takeaway uh, from whatever happens between BYU basketball and Morgan State. So uh, those of you who are going out to the game, uh, courtesy of some of our listeners here on the podcast enjoy that and obviously we'll be back with you guys on monday after i do my film review breaking down everything i took away from this loss for byu we'll have it all for you guys right here on your only daily podcast focus on all things byu the locked on cougars podcast once again thank you for making it your first listen to the day and as i always say thank you for being every day is with us as well hope you guys have a fantastic rest of whatever's left of your saturday or sunday whenever you watch and or hear this thank you for all the support and we will talk to you guys again soon this has once again been the Locked On Cougars podcast postcast edition as BYU comes up short against Oklahoma. See ya.